Hello and welcome to chapter four, accrual accounting and the adjustment process. Uh, if some of you travel down the nerd accounting hole far enough, you will find um, awesome accounting <laughs> memes that uh, say it's an accrual world and some bunch of others to that effect. Um, I always say that, you know, you're never really into a topic until you can make I don't want to say funny jokes, uh, but like make jokes about accounting and joke it. So what we're going to be looking at in this chapter is really the foundation, the fundamentals of accounting and our language. Uh, we have two different types of accounting. One is cash based. The other is accrual based. And really, we almost never use cash, like ever. The closest thing to using cash is if you were running, say, a lemonade stand. Cool, absolutely, you, you cash that up. And taxation. Interestingly enough, uh, the foundation for taxation is we think about what happens to cash, and that acts as the foundation. But otherwise, it's the accrual world, uh, accrual basis of accounting. Um, so first, we're going to look at cash-based. What is that? And then for the rest of forever, in all of our classes, we will probably never talk about cash-based accounting again. So in this first video of the chapter, we are going to look at just that, the accrual basis, and why we're going to be doing adjusting entries. And then the rest of the videos for this chapter, we'll be looking at adjusting entries, how to do them, and our friend again, the trial balance. So friendly reminder, what we looked at last week was we analyzed transactions. We said, hey, is this something that has an economic impact? If yes, we need to capture it. We need to code it to our accounting records. And how do we code it? Well, in accounting, we call it journalizing the transactions. Once we've captured or coded or journalized them, then we post them to the ledger accounts. That's when our friends, the T account came in. And then from there, we close out the accounts and that becomes our trial balance. Well, we're going to interject, whoops, we're going to interject a few more steps kind of between three and four here, because what chapter four does is say, hey, cool. Chapter three, your good foundation. Chapter four, we got some other stuff going on once we enter into accrual accounting. We're still gonna journalize and post entries to those T accounts. However, now we're gonna introduce an adjusted trial balance. So um, there's, you know, their initial trial balance. Then we have to adjust things because we used accrual accounting. And then from there, we are going to prepare financial statements and then after we prepare the financial statements, we have post-closing entries, which again, we need to create a trial balance. So the cool thing here is, you know, we journalize, we have a trial balance. Then we prepare our adjustments, we have a trial balance. And then we have financial statements, we journalize, and we have a post-closing trial balance. Now, typically, we wouldn't do a trial balance kind of after we journalize the transactions and then um, another one um, after the post-closing journal entries. So now we would see that these two go together, journalizing the actual transactions and then journalizing the accrual-based adjusting entries. So really these two will go end up blending together and then we prepare our adjusted trial balance, create our financial statements, and once we're done, you know, when we kind of ramp up to do next period, that's when we close out the entries um, and kind of are left with this trial balance, but this doesn't go to financial statements. This kind of just creates a, like an accumulated blank slate where we start off and do it again next period. All right, so cash-based accounting is possibly like what you're thinking. Uh, it is we record revenue when cash is received. We record expenses only when cash is paid. Oh goodness, um, like this is easy. So coming back to our lemonade stand, you buy the lemons, well, you had to go to grocery store, you had to credit cash, debit, um, I don't know, lemon inventory. Uh, and, you know, same thing. You um, had to, you know, get your, your parents out there, you get some free labor, so, you know, cash didn't exchange hands, and yet somebody set up your lemonade stand. Um, 
no cash exchanged, no expenses incurred. Cool. And now you have your first customer. They give you, I don't know, what is the going rate for a cup of lemonade? I'm going to say $2. Maybe that indicates my age. You're going to be like, no way, lady. <laughs> We're not selling anything for less than five. Cool. All right. Five dollars. Um, you know. Uh, so the moment that they tap their interact card or they slide you that five dollar bill, then you're like, great. Uh, debit cash, credit revenue. We only record when cash is paid. We only um, recognize entries when cash is exchanged. So big, big thing. Cash is king. However, for accounting, this can lead to tons of misinformation. Could you imagine uh, if Shania Twain <laughs> from our last, oh my gosh, okay, I'll use um. A few years ago, the student said Billy Eilish. Uh, again, don't don't hate on me for the pronunciation. I'm trying. Um, so you either are paying for a Billy Eilish or a Shania Twain concert, and if they could just record revenue whenever you give them the cash, like they're gonna have a, an amazing year the year before they go on tour. Like the moment tickets go for sale, like they're like, wow, like I earned so much. Well. Not really though. Did they perform the concert? Did you get the economic value that you were expecting when you spent hundreds of dollars, and my gosh, and if it's T-Swift, like thousands of dollars on your tickets? No. So these timing differences are what really buggers us up when talking about cash-based accounting. We need to make sure that, you know, if what we're truly trying to do is capture the economic reality of this organization, when it matters, we need to make sure we have a better tool. And I say when it matters because, you know, if you have a weekend uh, lemonade stand, have at our cash accounting, that is awesome. Similarly, if you have not very complex business um, and you don't have any investors, you don't have any bank loans, keep it simple. Keep cash based. No shame in this game, I promise. However, when you need to start communicating to people the economic reality of your business for a loan, for investors, for an accounting project, you need accrual accounting. So this provides users an insight into the economic reality of your organization. They let you know, hey, cool, Shania, did you sell a bunch of tickets but not perform yet? We'll see that on your accrual accounting financial statements. And this really allows us to capture the economic life of a business into different periods, whether it's a year, whether it's a quarter, whether it's monthly. By capturing the, the economic reality, we can parse it into whatever period you want. Um, you can do it daily, although that would be very, very onerous and you would only be employing accountants at that part to you know, go through this entire chapter's worth of journal transactions from start to finish every day. You probably wouldn't even get it done. Um, so accrual accounting, if you had to remember one thing, this is the economic reality. And if you had to remember two things, this would be uh, basically the only thing we are going to be talking about for forever until you graduate with your accounting major and until for talking, talking about for forever um, and when you complete your CPA designation, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So unless you are interested in selling lemonade or another simple simple um, business, which again, might be okay. And, that's, that's cool. If that's your jam. Absolutely support that. Um, but for the rest of us, uh, we are going to be on to this accrual accounting ride forever. All right. So with that good news, let's talk some more about accrual basis accounting. We record revenue when it is earned. Okay, Shania? Okay, Billy? Uh, when T, KT Swift, when you step on stage and when you provide your last encore, when your lights turn off, that is when you can book your revenue. Similarly, when we record expenses and is when it's used or consumed. So there's no free ride. Um, for example, at T Swift's concert, I'm sure they have security guards. So as soon as the security guards are, you know, 
done for the night, uh, those expenses are recorded regardless of when the cash goes out. So the security guards might uh, work that Friday night and again that Saturday and they might not get paid until the following Friday. Well, we record the expenses as at the date of Saturday, both Friday night and Saturday night, when they worked. So when it's consumed, when it's used, that's when the expenses are incurred. We're looking at the economic reality. If you, here's a little tip. If you are writing a test with me, uh, especially a final exam, and you freeze up, uh, just write economic reality and start trying to journalize something or capture something. We love part marks. We love to provide marks for effort. We love to provide marks for you doing the accounting thing, even if you know it doesn't look exactly like the solution. That is okay. I say we because it'll be my team and I marking, and I'll give lots more details about that uh, closer to the final exam. All right. So question time. I want you to give this a think. How might revenue be recognized for a large publicly traded transportation company? And how might this revenue compare to revenue that might be recorded for a small convenience store? Give this video a pause, give it a think, perhaps write down your answer and see if we agree on the impact. Talk to you soon. All right, so the large publicly traded transportation company, we could have a number of things that happen here. I was gonna start doing some journal entries, but I'm gonna stop myself for the big one because we'll have some more complicated journal entries um, for the, well, you know what? So cool, um, the large publicly traded transportation company, maybe they have signed an agreement uh, to transport. So do we do anything with this signed agreement? No. But then they get the goods and they start trekking along and they make it 50% of their way um, to the destination. Okay, well, we're gonna debit accounts receivable for 50% of the fee and we can uh, recognize some revenue. This is making a very simplistic um, explanation, but in general, if you are 50% of the way through uh, your contract and it meets a couple other criteria, which we will talk about in a later, um, a later chapter, then you can record 50% of the fee. All right, and then you keep chugging along and you get to the end, you can record, whoops, you can record the next 50%, yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, so right now you now have AR for 100% of your fee, and if you add both of those journal entries together, and now you have revenue recorded for 50%. So that's fabulous. Um, you've recorded your revenue and you did so in stages because it took a long time to get um, the goods from one side of the country to the other. Times that by a bazillion different truckloads, um, shorter distances, longer distances, and you have a large complex, um, relatively uh, just involved transaction, uh, set of transactions for this. Okay, now let's look at how this might be recorded for a small convenience store. Well, the small convenience store would be a lot like your lemonade stand. And if somebody comes in, they're like, cool, here is your cash for $5 for your $5 candy. People, when I was young, we used to have five cent candy. I don't even wanna know what five cent candy costs now. Maybe like a dollar candy, 25 cent candy, I don't know. Those giant frogs, we used to be able to get them for 25 cents. If I could walk out of a convenience store for less than a dollar, I would be surprised. Anyways, uh, <laughs> let me know how much those giant frogs cost per frog. Okay, um, credit, revenue, $5 revenue, so. Sorry, revenue. So nice and simple. We don't have a delay in timing. We're like, I want the frog, I pay the money, I get the frog. The On the other side, the convenience store is like, thank you, I have your cash, and I'm gonna recognize the revenue from the frog sale. Cool. All right, so that's it for this chapter. I will see you in the next one.